Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, the pre-calculus. Yesterday we finished with problem 28 and we left 29 and 30 to do today at the beginning of class. And can you see with problem 29 some additional level of complexity? Yes. You can, right? Did anybody try to work, work this out yet? No. Yeah. Yeah. You have, Will? Yes. Did you You've tried to work it out? I'm not sure if it's it or not. Okay. I have an answer. I'm not sure if it's right. Let me just take a glance at it. So, uh, Kayla made at least at least a very excellent attempt at it, and she was probably she was probably like ninety five percent right. About hundred percent. Less than ninety percent. Hundred percent. That's what I'm doing. Right. Yeah, that's right. I think it's, I think it's right. I don't know. We are getting that's right. So I don't know. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, you just multiply fractions together. No. Just tell me your key. Yeah. Oh, I did. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. We have we have some really we have some really smart students in here. Not not surprising. Kayla and Will worked this out. Kayla got it very close to correct, and I think Will might have got it exactly correct. But. But what Will did is he changed those to decimals and multiplied together and got them right. And decimals is one way to go, but let me show you what I, sort of the way I look at it. So if we have x equals 2, x equals 1 half, and x equals 3 halves, we can find the zeros related to that. And so what zeros do we have here? are in factors. X minus two. And we have x minus one half equals zero. And we have x minus three halves equals zero. And so you can you can work this out by just putting your zeros like this, putting like your factors like this. Now if we multiply this all together, what are we going to get if we multiply all these x's together? Uh, x times x times x. So our leading coefficient will be x cubed. So we know we're going to need to have 2x cubed, right? I want to show you something here that doesn't bother, I guess it didn't bother Will, but does it bother anybody here to have those fractions? Yes. Yeah, it does. It really bothers me too. Okay, I could probably do them. We could probably do them, but I think my life will be easier without those fractions here with what I want to do multiplying together. So what did you say? So bottoms up 2x minus 1. So I want to give Hannah credit for figuring that out. And then what's this going to be? And, and now if we multiply all these x's together, we're going to get 4x cubed. And so to get this as a co-leading coefficient of 2, what are we going to have to do? Well, no. We'll have to divide by 2. So if we multiply all these together and divide by 2, we'll have it. So I want to give some extra credit special here to 
to Kayla and Hannah and Will for helping us out on this. Thank you, ladies and Will. All right, so now we can multiply these together. And if we do that, we get, I'm going to get 2x squared. And then we're going to have minus 4x minus 1x. So that's going to be minus 5x. Is that right? Yes. And then we're going to have plus 2. And then we're going to multiply all this by 2x minus 3. 2x minus 3. I mean, two, yeah, that's what I'm and then divide that by 2. We should be good, right? So let's go ahead. If I go ahead and put this over here. So we put 2x squared minus 5x plus 2. Then we have 2x minus 3. So here we get 4x cubed and minus 10x squared. And then we have 4x over here. And then negative 6x squared and then negative 3 times we get 15x is that right and then we have minus 6 and so what we're going to get here is well this is not this is not equal exactly because we're dividing by 2 so we've introduced division by 2 but then we get we're going to get uh, one half, I'm going to make it like this to save space, one half of 4x cubed, and then we'll have negative 6 and negative 10, so minus 16x squared, and then we have plus 19x minus 6, and then we multiply all these together, we get 2x cubed and minus 8x squared plus now you can put nine you can put 9.5 I'm just going to put 19 halves uh, minus 3 so this will be this will be our answer right here and that's what that's exactly what you got isn't that right yeah. Will? Yeah. yeah and Kayla you were very close to that right yeah I just thought I didn't just leave up to yeah, so so very yeah, so she got everything else right. So really that's some good work. But do you think it helped to get rid of these fractions here? Yes. Would that as as well as you did that without doing that, would this be even easier for you to do it that way? Maybe? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe I like the X <laughs> you just along Oh, keep it factored form is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, factored form really for graphing and all that. It's because because really, once you bottoms up like this, once you're to this level here, it's just it's just really arithmetic, isn't it? Yeah. To to get to the uh, standard form. So what I want to do is get turn you loose on 30, and then I'm gonna maybe call in a volunteer for 30. How's that? We Yeah, I found another little strip of stars. This, this is the last one I have. But, I'm 
until Miss Van gives me a little replacement order, I'm going to have these things too and these other stamps. So I'm going to be able to make types of recognition anyway. Okay, are we ready to choose a victim? Not yet. Not quite. Test my remembrance for the period. What happens, at least I'm, I'm remembering back from fifth period, but when you bottoms up that other zero there, it gives you 2x minus 5 as a factor. And so you just, is that what you got? And then you multiply everything through and it just comes out as 2x to the fourth power, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, so we got two people finished. Who else has finished this? Will has finished. Who else? Young ladies in the back. What about you, Jane? You finished it? So do I need Emily? Are you finishing? Let me give you another minute or so. And I'll, then I'll call on a victim. I do want to show you something I did. Okay, you saw this twin shirt. The other shirt I have. Underneath is this one. Why do you have two shirts on, Mr. Chief? Well, because I was invited to be twin with the English teachers. And then the uh, algebra two students wanted to see. So you're double twin then? Yes, uh, double twin. So I'm a, I'm a two timer twin today. So they got this. And these are actually shirts that I made for the English department. And then this one. Thank you. 
Okay, we're ready to spin our wheel. Yeah. What about you, Adam? Did you get this one? No, I'm kind of stuck. You're stuck? All right. Let's go spin the wheel. It's going to come out. Where? Emma better not. Hey. Of course, we know Emma's not here. We know Angel's not here. No, Jana, are you ready for this no, Jana? Jana's not. So Jana takes a pass. She's kind of new back to the class too, so she's... You know, I understand this is a more, kind of a more tedious problem. To me, starting it out was not that bad. I just said that, that no. No? No. I got to the second part Okay. Yeah, to me the first part is not bad to set up, but it's sort of the tediousness of working it out. Well, I'll give one more person a chance here. All right, kid, how did you attack this one? Distributed. Well, first, did you do this? Did you do x? Did you just make the factors like x mm -hmm. plus 3? Right? x plus 1, x, and x minus 5 over 2. Mm -hmm. So these are your, these are your, so you just go like this. And then x out here, right? And then x minus 5 halves. Okay, what next? Okay, before I do that, let me do this one more thing. Did you bottoms up this thing too? Okay, so you got 2x minus 5. So now you distributed everything out. So you got x times, is this like x squared plus 4x plus 3? Does that look right? And then 2x minus 5. And then you distributed one more time and you had it, right? Did you just distribute one at a time here on this? Yes, so you didn't use a box on this? So, so what we had, she didn't use a box, we'll try to mimic that. So she got 2x cubed, and then she got, uh, so negative 5x squared, right, so that's, this distributed to these two, and then she got plus plus eight x squared, minus twenty x, and then minus twenty x, plus six x, plus six x, minus fifteen, and then combining like terms, so she has what's that going to be? Plus three x squared. Is that right? And then we'll have minus 14x, and then minus 15, and then finally uh, 2x to the fourth power, plus 3x cubed, minus 14x squared, minus 15x. Does that look right? Does that look right? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Okay. So, uh, to me, I think this is really a little easier than problem 29, to be, to be honest with you, I think. Okay, we're going to be, uh, I appreciate you working on this. We're going to start talking about something today that Kayla had brought up yesterday when we were working on problem 20. Five. And 
Let's go back to problem 25. Okay, today we're going to be starting on something that Kayla kind of introduced yesterday when she was working on problem 25, and it's this thing right here called the Rational Roots Theorem. And before I write out how to use that, I'm going to go back to problem 25. And here's problem 25, and if, if you remember from yesterday, Kayla, she looked at this and said, well, well, 3 and 17 are going to be possible zeros of this somehow, right? Because she just looked at this, so what, what are the factors of 51? And so really what she brought up yesterday was sort of the starting point of what the Rational Roots Theorem actually is. So let's go ahead and, and make that more concrete by going to problem 33. And the Rational Roots Theorem says that possible rational zeros are rational roots. You know roots and zeros are the same thing, right? To get possible rational zeros, what we do is we take plus or minus factors of last or, or constant term divided by factors of, of the coefficient of the first term. And before I, before I show you number 33 worked out, I'm going to go back to that problem 25. Now, you can see from 25 that we have x is equal to negative 3 is one of our zeros, and x is equal to 1. And then when we did the synthetic division, we found that we end up getting 5x minus 17 is equal to 0. So we ended up getting x is equal to 17 over 5 as 0. Do you remember that from yesterday? Yes. So these are the actual zeros. And because we have a because we have a cubic function here, what's the maximum number of, of zeros we can get out of this? Three. Three. Okay, so three is the maximum number we can get. 
And to use the rational roots theorem, what we do is we take plus or minus factors of constant term. So plus or minus, what are your factors of 51? Well, always there's going to be one. And then the ones that Kayla mentioned, right, which were three, and then plus or minus 17, and finally plus or minus 51 over the factors of the coefficient of the first term. What's, what's the coefficient of the first term? Five. five. And so we'll put one comma five. And so our list of possible rational zeros is going to be a pretty long one because we're going to have plus or minus one over one plus or minus, so if we divide each of these by one, so we'll get plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus 17, and plus or minus 51. Wait, so that's... Why did we put one in five on the bottom? Pardon me, what did you say? Why did we put one in five on the bottom? Because that's, that's how the rational roots theorem works. So now let's, let's go ahead, we got them divided by one. Now we gotta divide all these by five. So we're going to have 1 divided by 5, and then 3 divided by 5. Wait, so what's the reason behind the 1 and 5? Wait, where did the 1 come from? I know where the 5 came back, but where did the 1 come from? 1 is a factor of, I oh, mean, where the 1 here? Yeah. 1 is a factor of 5. So you factor out the 5, which is 1 and 5. Right. Well, they are factors of it, and, it, and these are all p factors of, of 51 on the numerator, see that? And then we have plus or minus 17 over 5, and finally plus or minus 51 over 5. And you can see what the real ones are, right? They're going to be plus 17 over 5, negative 3, and positive 1. But this creates a list for us. So basically in this section here, we're creating a list of possible rational zeros. So that's the rational roots theorem. So let's go back to problem 33. And we're just gonna kind of dip our toe in the water today on this. So right now, to possible rational zeros, so we have plus or minus, what's a, what's a, what are the factor, possible rational factors of one? One. one? one. Okay, over, what are the possible factors of six? One, one two, two, three, three six. six. So now we can write our list of possible rational, we have plus or minus one over one, plus or minus one over two, plus or minus one half, Okay, so these would be our answers. And then determine which ones, if any, are zeros. How can you determine which one, if any, are zeros? Graph. You can graph. Now, well, you can graph it, but we're really, we're sort of at the level right now where we're trying to, to go without a calculator and just reserve our calculator for checking our work. You can use synthetic division. We can use synthetic division, but synthetic division can get a little messy for those fractions. So one thing you can do is you can you can go ahead and use the remainder theorem and just plug in for for this. And some of these are tedious and have fractional answers because you have eight possible answers for this. But if we plug in one, let's plug in one. If we plug in one as a potential zero, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to get 6 times 1 minus 5 times 1 minus 1. So is 1 going to be a 0? Yeah. So 1 is a, a 0. And then, Hannah, what you can do is you can use synthetic division and to see if what's left can be factorable and work from there. 
And to, to do that, we can go like this. We can say, okay, one, is, we know is a zero. We'll have six, and then we'll have a zero, a negative five, and negative one. So we bring this down, we get one x squared. One times one is one, plus x, one times one. one. Oh, six, I misread my own writing. Then six times one is six, thank you. And then that's six. And then one times six is six. six. So we get one. One times one is one, zero. So we're going to get six x squared plus six x plus one. And it may not be readily apparent to you, but this one here has no real zeros. Okay. Do, does that apparent to you? Uh, yeah, because it's a parabola and the... Wait, turn off. Right there? Or this, this one here is what we got by using this thing. It, it's so, a positive parabola, so it goes up and the y-intercept is above the x-axis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 6x squared Okay, there are going to be other zeros there too. They're going to be, well, so I lied to you. Not the first time, not going to be the last time either. We can find out, now by graphing, we can test these. So it looks like we have negative one-third. We can find out what they are. Then we can test the fractional zeros using the rash using the remainder theorem the same way, but the fractions are going to be what? A little tedious doing that. So I don't really, let's, let's find out what that is exactly. Second, see one-sixth is going to be, what I'll do is this. I'm going to go, I'm going to use table set of one divided by six. Delta table. There we go. And now I should be able to see him here. Uh, I'm not seeing him. Okay, at one we should get zero. Oh, okay, I know what I need to do. Yeah, what they are is they're irrational zeros. So what, the, what they get are is they are not rational zeros. They are irrational zeros, that's what it is. So one is gonna be the only rational zero in that.